Oil is perhaps one of the most important commodities in the world. It is generally traded in US dollars. A large percentage of the world's oil comes from the Middle East, particularly Saudi Arabia. The petrodollar, in short, is a term used to describe US military protection of the oil fields in exchange for a monopoly on the US currency being the medium of exchange. This has placed a heavy burden upon the countries which want nothing to do with the US and its currency. Today, we experience many potential disruptions in the supply of oil, ones which could have a lasting ripple effect. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we will talk about five things which could send oil way higher. Let's get into it first. As you look just a couple days ago, there's this article out of Reuters. Oil prices retreated from 2016 highs and snapped a two-day rally on Wednesday, hurt by a surge in the dollar after the U.S. Federal Reserve signaled it could raise interest rates next month. So before I get into the next article, which is pretty funny, hang in for just a second. Basically, what they said was, look, we may raise interest rates. The Federal Reserve said this. We may raise the interest rates and immediately we see a deflation in the markets. Immediately, people begin selling off, or the computers begin selling off. Just because they may increase interest rates at such a minute amount, it's insignificant. If they do, usually it takes a year for them to get anywhere. But perhaps they will. They said they will. And like I said, even if they do, it's so marginal, so fractional, that it doesn't matter. But what we notice every single time is the fact that as soon as they say they're going to raise interest rates, that the market reacts negatively. That's important to note. Okay, so here we are just a couple days ago. And then as of the recording of this video, oil prices rose in early trading on Friday as turmoil in Nigeria, shale bankruptcies in the United States, and crisis in Venezuela all contributed to tightening supplies. So here... They said there was a huge glut. There was millions of barrels of oil. Just every there was so much oil. I mean, you go into your backyard, no matter where you live, you just dig, and there's 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 oil right there. There's oil. Now, regardless of what side of the fence you're on, what information you've been looking at, what's important to note about oil, just like any other commodity, is that we don't know how much there is. It's all a guess. It's all estimations. You know, they say oftentimes that Venezuela is sitting on the biggest reserves. But do we know that? Not really. I mean, we can guess that. But how much are they pulling out? How much are they actually putting into the barrels? And then once it's in the barrels, how much is actually being shipped out to be distributed, to be consumed? These are what's important. We need to understand that, look, a lot of this information that we're getting, it's skewed. It's perhaps even false. But the glut, the supply, this is where I have to go with it every single time. The supply, this so-called glut that they had, it was impossible to be formed overnight like they suggested it was. The price went from something like $110 a barrel down to practically $30 a barrel. And it did so in such a short period of time. However, you know, the numbers I can't remember at the time, but it drops so sick, so drastically in like a year and a half. And all because of the supply glut that came out of nowhere, that's not true. There's more reasons for the price of oil to go up right now, at least what they suggest. If you look at just mainstream media stuff. There's a f war going on over here. There's something going on in the Strait of Hormuz tomorrow. There's always something giving it a reason to go up in price. But they manipulate it because perhaps they want to buy into it. Perhaps they want to shake out all the weak investors. There's different reasons why. They want to hurt particular countries. Wink, wink, Russia. 
there's different reasons. All I know is that that price going from that high to that low, that's not real. That's not a natural market progression. Let's get into it right away. I'm rambling enough. This is a lot of this information here is from the Financial Times, excellent article, and I thought about just covering just briefly, but you know what? I wanted to get into the whole thing. It's really good. It's five things that you need to know for the near future. Nigeria and other troubled OPEC producers. And what's interesting about this is that this article was published prior to the one I just mentioned. So the turmoil in there in Nigeria certainly is heating up. The latest leg up in prices comes as an output in what Africa's largest producer has fallen to the lowest level in more than 20 years. We're talking about militant attacks. You're talking about pipelines and terminals that are being affected by this. So we need to understand that whether it's terrorism, whether it's natural disasters, whether it's some sort of disruption for any political government situation. These are real, not just in Nigeria, not just in Africa, but all around the world. So keep an eye on that. Think about that as the days go on, as you're reading the information in the news. Supply disruptions basically interconnected with that, but here we're touching on Alberta. And they're claiming they have knocked out about a million barrels a day, or more than a fifth of the country's production in Canada. So this is important to note, as I said, natural disasters, you know, and think about fires, think about anything, storms or what have you, could result in a disruption in the oil supply. And then, of course, as a result, perhaps if this is something that would have been going on for, let's say, months or years, then countries will perhaps stop doing business with Canada or at least reduce the amount and they need to get oil from somewhere else. So they start doing business with Saudi Arabia, the U.S., whoever it might be. So that's what you'll find interesting, that countries start to do business, perhaps not just for political reasons, but sometimes it's just better business to go elsewhere. All right, let's look at this. Saudi Arabia. Is the OPEC kingpin Saudi Arabia going to raise output? That is perhaps the biggest question dogging oil markets in the medium term will the replacement of veteran oil minister earlier this month cementing the deputy crown prince control over the oil sector traders are nervously watching for any sign of higher output from the desert kingdom so something that i've been covering frequently basically saudi arabia says look i realize the price has shot down to the bottom and we are going to increase our output but now this right here seems a little bit ridiculous i believe to some degree that it could be, and I'm just could be, I don't have any actual intelligence on this, but Saudi Arabia working with the US in order to hurt countries like Russia. Now, how? why would they do that? Why would Saudi Arabia, a country which is seen to have you know, a little negativity, a little bit of conflict and tension in between the U.S. and them, why would they want to do business with the U.S.? Well, number one, what's important to note is that Saudi Arabia and the U.S. are hand in hand. Regardless of what we see in the news, little petty things back and forth, I'm not really buying it. Sure, to some degree, there's always a little battle going on, but I believe that at least you know, a little bit deeper into this, you see countries like the US or NATO, as an example, against Russia. And one way to hurt them really badly is to affect the prices of oil. So Saudi Arabia, you know, pumping to a record amount as they're watching the prices fall down and down and down, have to go and take a new route in order to, in order to get their economy going again, to me, this just doesn't make sense. I think perhaps they made a deal on the sidelines, you know, we'll give you some money, we'll give you some protection, we'll give you more military, whatever it might be, and you continue to output at a record rate. So that's just a guess. That's just something I've thought about as a speculation. Thought you might be interested in that. U.S. shale. U.S. average annual crude oil output is forecast to fall And that will be according to the EIA, but higher prices have already seen the agency trim the size of the drop by 100,000, then it goes down and down. So what I see with U.S. shale is that 
despite the troubles that it causes, which is it seems to be more clear as time goes on, but it ha- did bring a large supply of crude oil into the markets. At least they claim so. The challenge is that it's much more expensive than, for example, Middle Eastern oil, where they knock on the ground and up it comes. So it's a lot different. And yes, when you do have to ship it overseas, it costs money, but it's a lot cheaper, in fact, to do that than to have the shale sometimes. Of course, each uh, rig is different and everything else. But what we note from shale is that it generally costs more money than the traditional ways of getting the oil out of the ground. That's important to note, and you should be paying attention to that because we can see how many are coming online and how many are going offline. Those statistics are are important to look at. Hedge funds. When oil prices bottomed below $30 a barrel in January, hedge funds started buying. In the first 19 weeks of the year, money managers were net buyers of Brent crude oil, accumulating a near record position equivalent of 420 million barrels of crude. And then it goes on. Basically, what I want to note with this is that remember that whatever you're dealing with, when you look at any particular commodity, understand that a lot of the times you're not buying real commodities. You are buying paper. You're buying futures. Now, yes, if you're doing it properly, you're actually buying the commodity at a future date. That's what a future is. But a lot of people are sort of taking side bets on it. They don't really know the difference. If you want an excellent book on commodities, how to buy them, what to look out for, then look at Hot Commodities by Jim Rogers. Excellent book. But understand that when we deal with commodities, whether that's gold, whether that's silver, anything else, when we see the price on you know, your favorite Websites, stock and markets, websites, whatever, Bloomberg, whatever. What you're seeing there is not the actual crude oil, okay? What you're seeing is, in fact, a a paper, a piece of paper. It's not real, but that's the way they chase this. That's the way they try to put it in their faces, and they sell oil onto the market. They buy more oil, but that oil hasn't even, probably hasn't even been pumped out of the ground yet. And that's where we have to pay it very close attention to. This is from my book as I talk about the Arab Spring, as I talk about the disruptions in the oil supply. And I'm talking about the Middle East specifically here. If this flow is disturbed, the price can skyrocket. This will cause a recession very quickly, which is quite the opposite of what the world needs right now. And that's exactly what could happen. See, if you look at the price of oil, how it's come down dramatically, did it boost the economy? No. Why? Because the economy is so hurt that it can't, you know, just this one thing can have the effect it needs. But if the price goes up from here, we are going to be even in more trouble. So these are a few things that I'm, I've been thinking about that this article happens to point out and try to give my pointers as well. Hope you do appreciate this. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. And last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know you will find my book, The Money GPS, even more informative. If you want to look through the book, just head over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature, which will allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.